Good morning ladies and gentlemen from the shores of Go Refuge Lake, Scambia Lakes. This morning we are engaging in a little experiment. Up on these top two rows of this particular little area on the banks of Goat Refuge Lake, we've pulled out the hibiscus sabdarifa, which you see stacked up over there on the other side of the fence. And we see these top two rows, which have just loosened up a bit with a rake. Very rich soil. It's been enriched with compost throughout the last few years. It just gets better and better. Just below we see a row of carrots that were planted a few weeks back and some beets and more carrots. What we have here today, I hope you like experiments, folks. <laughs> we had put a bunch of beet seed in the refrigerator in these plastic bags before. Soaked beet seed. Beet seed. Weeks ago. I mean, it's. I'm seriously, it's at least three weeks ago. And we neglected to get to the planting of it. And so we have ourselves kind of like an unintentional experiment here. We've got beet sprouts. Now we've got two different varieties. We've got the red giant, red, it's called the red mammoth. Red mammoth giant fodder beets. They're supposed to be able to grow up to 20 pounds a piece. Uh, well, we'd love to see that. And then these others are the early wonder variety of beet. So we're going to put them side by side so we can compare the results. Same soil, same area, and get a much better evaluation of, of these beets and the differences between them. There's a lot of beet seed here, a lot more than we need for these rows, and we intend to plant those out in other places. There's a lot of places that are, that are just about, they're ready, they're ready for these. Just need to get out and put them in the ground. This is our first winter growing beets. Carrots, it's the fourth winter, and they just grow great. Uh, you're probably saying, well, where are they? Well, what happens is we plant them through the late fall and winter, and they just slowly grow uh, smaller plants and all. But then as you get into February and Mar get into March, they're just that's when they really grow up and, and uh, at an accelerated rate. And then going into the summer, we've got an abundance of carrots. So there's no rush. It's, it's a winter crop where we're at. We're in a hot, humid area, still in Florida, and out, we're at the Alabama line. Actually, we're sitting on Alabama soil right now. The Florida line is right there at those trees, and we're cutting through those woods. So, I mean, we, we just hit three, uh, a frost last night. We got around 30 degrees. We, we saw some frost this morning, but sunny sky today, and... Um, we don't see frozen ground here folks at the same time it gets hot and humid and it will you try to plant some of these things in the spring and it's too late <laughs> it'll burn up in the heat uh the humidity so um we we've got water we've got 40 foot radius sprinklers along this bank we can um hydrate anytime we want um that's not a problem and, and you know they they need to keep moist to grow but we've had great success with carrots they just grow C can the beets follow the same path will they behave the same way we're 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 doing the experiment for the first time and we love beets we're very interested in growing beets uh we'd like more mass than we would get with carrots if possible bigger roots and uh very nutritious <clears throat> feed for the goats so let's get to work we're gonna plant these in these rows get an abundance of the beets started here from sprouts for the first time not put it in the seed but actually these sprouts that have been under in the refrigerator for weeks so this is a first time for that if anyone would like to um uh venture as to the results of our experiment uh please feel free to um engage in the comments and discussion and give us a call and we assure you that we will be back to report on on this wonderful little experiment all right let's get to work <laughs> 